All right, so we are here in California. We're gonna go visit a good friend of mine, Gabrielle Ruiz, and her husband, Philip Pisanchin. So Gabrielle and I, called her Gabby at the time, actually met back in college. I've known her for over 10 years now, which is crazy to think about. Since she graduated college, she moved on to New York and, and she was in uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda's In the Heights on Broadway. She went from there to Evita uh, with Ricky Martin, Chick your bon bon. And um, now she's a star in the CW's Crazy Ex-Girlfriend as Valencia. And she married a pretty rad gent named Philip Kasanchin. And um, he's a pretty humble guy. Uh, he's actually an award-winning lighting designer. Uh, he's done everything from theatrical to television to private events. Uh, he's done some beautiful work. Um, but the two of them, and it's no question why they decided to get married, the two of them have always seemed to have the gusto and the audacity to make their own decisions in life and really customize beautiful lives. So I'm excited to check it out. I hope you are too. The tenacity of being humble is definitely my mantra to feel like I can customize exactly the life that I want. You know, there was a moment after In the Heights when we closed that I was probably in New York City for about three years at that point. Mm. And there was a, it was my first slump session in New York City. It was my first slump period where I wasn't booking anything. Um, my feedback from auditions were um, just mediocre, just mm. something that just, there was no razz, there, there was not enough there for them to feel like they wanted to work on a new project with me. Um, and I remember calling my mom and crying on the phone and being like, I was so close to this show. I was so close and they just didn't pick me. I, you know, it's just, I need to figure out what this riddle is of not picking me. And she said, well, do you want to come home? And I was like, no, I just need to cry about it. Mm -hmm. And then tomorrow I'm just going to try again. Yeah. And she just, I just remember that moment where I was like, you know what? I live here. Like I'm not just playing in New York City. I'm not just having a good time. Mm -hmm. This is real work. And our, um, artistic director at Oklahoma City University where we went to school yep I always lived by what she said in ballet class that what we do is show business it's not show begging mm -hmm. and I come from an entrepreneurial family my grandfather was created his own uh, produce business my dad was a salesman and like head salesman there and whatnot and my grandfather would always be like he just always say things like a fast nickel sometimes is better than a slow dime mm -hmm. like the hustle is worth it yep. and you're gonna if you want things to happen you got to make them happen and be humble and I think humility was the biggest thing for me that I I knew I had to get my self back into class I had to become a stronger actor because I went to school for dance right and if I wanted to do this then I had to ask people how hmm. and I humbled myself to say I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> and I have to be okay with that yeah and I have to ask people and those people I want to surround myself with, to look up to them and not just feel like I can't attain that, but what is it that they're doing that, that, I, that they have that I want? Hmm. And I had no, I just have never been embarrassed to ask that question before. So I think it's the tenacity of being humble. That's so good. Is definitely my mantra. It's so worth trying so hard for exactly what you want. Go get it. Go work hard, ask questions so passionate about something it will be so worth it when you can attain it and when you are at the point of being able to live the life that you want whatever i want included into my life in the way that fits my lifestyle and my schedule and my living arrangements and that that's it's just it's open for you to have a bespoke life. This idea that we have to live some type of template stamped out by corporate America um, to, to find happiness, that you have to have this type of job, and you have to work this many hours to achieve success, which we don't even know how to define it anymore, um, is just, I've, I've, since I've been able to spend time with people on their deathbeds, I've, it's really uh, given me, influenced my decisions on how I live my life and, and how I, I um, am able to make my own decisions on what I want to do.
and not not based on necessarily financial or economy or anything but based on what's the right thing to do for me in my life right now mm -hmm. and it's and it's and it oftentimes is the hard thing to do. The, the truth of the matter is the cards are dealt evenly across everyone and it's what you do with the cards that makes or breaks your game. Also creating um, an environment of people around you that will help you get to that goal. Your friendships will change, your, your relationships will change. Um, and then when you assign yourself an accountability buddy, whether it be a partner or a friend or someone that you hire, or some, some kind of life coach, the chances are even higher. So just getting started on deciding how you're going to make that change with just either telling someone to writing it down to partnering up with somebody to start that. I think that's a really great place to start in general before you start seeing changes. And when I um, career coach for the artistic industry, one of my favorite things to let them know is when you start getting challenges, that means you're, you're doing the right thing. And ch challenge is good, change is good. The hard part, the tough part is great and just surrounding yourself with the right people um, and positive and encouraging people and people that support you, that to me has moved mountains in my life and has kept me going. I know many self-made people who went from nothing to having a lot of success based solely on the principle that they wanted to. And wanting to and sitting on the couch and eating Doritos, <laughs> uh, that, you know, that's, that's, kind of wanting to but wanting to and getting up at 5 a.m. and working out and then spending sunrise thinking about business ideas and then moving through your day that way and putting the effort in that is wanting to that's that's the desire that's the level you need to commit to um, and this is our vision board that we created uh, about a year ago and uh, we were just able to to cut out some magazine photos and uh, really choose things that inspire us. Not everything here is going to be uh, in our house, but it really informs our design decisions. And so we refer to this board oftentimes. I mean, obviously we're not going to have a blue sky, but it's more creative inspiration to uh, be able to link all of our design choices together. And the reason that that's important and the reason that Gabrielle makes vision boards for her own life is because once you're able to uh, solidify your goals and actually name them, um, then you can you can put them down on paper. And once you've put them down on paper, you can refer back to them. You can say over and over, "These are the things. These are, I've set this as a goal, and this is what I want to do. This is how I want to accomplish this thing." Once you're able to refer to that you don't stray, you don't suddenly change your goals, you're not suddenly saying, well, it's, it's difficult. Because if you, if you run into difficult parts of your life, without a, without a, a clear-cut goal, you're, um, you just kind of linger. You just kind of fall by the wayside. So putting your vision down on a board like that uh, really gives you the motivation to continue um, working at achieving those goals. I, you already got started. Just trust your instincts. Trusting your instincts to just be curious is already getting started. And I think starting is the hardest part of attaining any goal or achieving or conquering any challenge is just getting started on one little piece and if you're already there and if you're already here at this website, Customize Your Life, you've already won.